All right, thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Awesome. Glad to be here. Are you glad to be here this morning? Were you forced to be here this morning? It's okay, you don't have to answer if you were. Uh, <laughs> no, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to start off with, with a question. How many of you love watching shows or movies? Like those of you who love, right? There's a lot of K-drama lovers out there. There's a lot of shows, right? H have you ever... Uh, saw a scene where it's like a breakup and then th the guy is talking in front of his girlfriend and and then it's like really dramatic you know maybe there's rain in the background he's looking at her and then he's saying I promise I can change and then and then the girl is like crying and and then she gives him another chance and then shortly after he breaks her heart again have you ever seen those stories right it's like the, the guy makes this, this promise, but then his actions don't follow. Do you know of a person who says one thing, but then their actions speak another thing? Ooh. <laughs> Booch. For all the young people out there. Uh, do you know of a person who carries the label of being in a relationship, but then their lives don't reflect it because they're entertaining other people? Ooh, it's kind of quiet in here. Uh, now, what's the point of a label when your life doesn't reflect it? I, I want to be more direct this morning. What is the point of calling yourself a Christian if it is not reflected in the way that you live? According to John Mark, Mark, John Mark Comer, he's a Christian author and thinker. Uh, he, he said that studies say 64% in the U.S. identify as Christians, but about only 40% actually practice the ways of Jesus. I wonder what are the statistics when it comes to us as Filipinos here. Now, we know that New Life, this year we celebrated 33 years, which is amazing. And I, I believe we've reached this far because of people who chose to follow Jesus, not just by their words, but by their lives. Because of people who chose faithful, faithfulness to Jesus over their feelings. People who chose to follow Jesus on good days and bad days. I want to ask you a question. What could the next 33 years look like if we all chose to faithfully follow Jesus? I believe what God's doing and is going to do in our country isn't just going to be through pastors or missionaries or evangelists, even though that's great. God is calling all of us. God is calling all of us. We are the body of Christ, and we are not just to spectate, but to participate in what God is doing here in our country. May we be people who don't just say, I'm a Christian, May we be a people who genuinely follow Jesus with our lives. I'm going to read Romans 12 verse 1. It says this, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And maybe you're saying, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to follow Jesus. Sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable, especially when you're used to living one way and then Jesus is here and he flips the way that you're called to live. But this is the thing, and this is my handle for this morning. When you begin to understand God's mercy towards you, it will empower you to live sacrificially. It will empower you to live differently. In, in this verse, it says, in view of God's mercy. He's not just saying, just offer your bodies as a sacrifice. God didn't do anything for you, but just, just offer it as a sacrifice. No, no, no. It says, in view of God's mercy. First, look back at what God has already done for you. Look back at the mercy he has displayed towards you. What is mercy? Mercy is being spared from what you deserve. And when I think about what God spared me from. When I think about the death, I deserve that Jesus spared me from. The sin, I deserve that Jesus rescued me from. How, how can I live unchanged? How can I live just for myself when I recognize he has displayed so much mercy towards me? Can you imagine 
all that he has done for you? Can you remember the mercy he has displayed towards you? Notice it says, in view of his mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. It doesn't say, in view of God's mercy, do whatever makes you happy. In view of God's mercy, just live however you want. When you understand the mercy and love of God towards you, it will empower you to live sacrificially for His glory, not your own. To live for more than yourself. To live a life where the love of God is displayed. Now, I want to share a story of a woman. Her name's Corey Ten Boom. She was a follower of Jesus who was alive during the Holocaust. And she shared these thoughts when she was done preaching at the church service in Germany. After the service, she saw one of the former German prison guards attending church. And this man was not just a random German guard. He was one of the people she vividly remembered seeing in one of the camps, mocking her and her sister and dehumanizing all of the people there. That was a while back, and the man had probably forgotten her, but... After the service, the man came, she says this, the man came up to me, and as the church was emptying, he was beaming and bowing, and he, he said to her, how grateful I am for your message. To think that as you say, Jesus has washed my sins away, and he's probably thinking, I've done really horrible stuff. Jesus has washed my sins away, and then the man's hand was thrust out to shake mine, and I, who had preached so often to the people the need to forgive, kept my hand at my side. Can you imagine if Corey was a Filipino? Like, she sees this man approaching her. She's like, oh my gosh, nandito siya. Kapal ng mukha, pumunta pa siya dito. Tapos, nag-amen pa siya. And then, if, but then when he comes, he says, oh, hi, brother. God bless you. Nice to see you. I'm so glad. Like, that's just the way my mind's thinking. Uh, but this, 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 these were her thoughts. She said, even as the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled through me, I saw the sin of them. And she thought this, Jesus Christ had died for this man. Was I going to ask for more? Lord Jesus, I, I prayed, forgive me and help me to forgive. I tried to smile. I, I tried to raise my hand. I could not. I felt nothing, not the slightest spark of warmth or charity. And so again, I, I breathed a silent prayer. Jesus, I prayed, I cannot forgive him. Give me your forgiveness. And as I took his hand, the most incredible thing happened from my shoulder Along my arm and through my hand, a current seemed to pass from me to him, while into my heart sprang a love for this stranger that almost overwhelmed me. And so I discovered that it is not on our forgiveness any more than on our goodness that the world's healing hinges or relies on, but on his. When he tells us to love our enemies, he gives along with the command, the love itself. If God calls you towards something, he gives the empowerment to do it. But it requires your participation. You have got to act on your faith. You have got to act on the very thing you believe. You see, this woman, Corey, she understood the mercy of God. And though it was difficult, though her emotions took her another way, it empowered her to love in a sacrificial way. Could it be that Jesus didn't die just so you could occupy a seat here in church? That's a wake-up call for all of us. Could it be that he died so you could actually have a transformed life sharing his love to a broken world? I want to ask you a question. I think sometimes... The reason we, we don't live sacrificially is because we've forgotten how much mercy is actually displayed towards us. Do you remember the mercy he's displayed towards you? You know, the song we were singing earlier, More Than Able, one, one lyric there said, when did I start to forget all of the great things you did? 
May we ask ourselves that. May we not slip into this path of forgetting the mercy, forgetting the grace, forgetting the love he has displayed towards us. May we never lose sight of that. Ephesians 3, 18 to 19, it says this. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. It's not an option. It's not a recommendation. But if you, if you claim to be one of God's people, we're, we're called to understand, to, to look at his love. It says to understand how, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. You see, when you begin to understand, to remember, to take hold of his love, it changes you on the inside. It changes the way you live. It changes the way you walk. And this is who we're called to be as followers of Jesus. Not passive people, not spectators, but people who live out our faith everywhere we go. Not just here in this building, but everywhere we go. In school, in church, in our office place, in our campus, wherever we go. I'll end with these two questions. Number one. How has God displayed his mercy and love in your life? Take a moment to reflect on that. And number two, will you allow what he's done to affect the way that you live? Or will you just settle to live the same way? Thank you. May we be challenged this morning. Thank you. Wow. Amen and amen. Thank you, Andre, for that. That's, that's amazing. And you know, there's also a verse in the Bible that says, those who are forgiven much they love much. We come from a place of already loved. We have experienced this salvation that Christ has so freely given us. And so who are we to withhold it to those who are also in need, right? And it's not just following the instructions found in the Word of God for the sake of it. Yes, we're called to do that. And God has called us to live out holy lives just as He is. But there is a call to true repentance. Why? Because that's our new nature now. Our reference is our new nature in Christ, that we have been made brand new. Our new identity now is our reference point, and we have the Word of God as our standard. So when you release forgiveness, when you love on other people, when you walk out these commandments from the Lord, you're not just simply doing it to ease your conscience. You're doing it because there is an inward transformation that has taken place in your life, in your spirit, man. And that's actually the second verse in Romans chapter 12. Andre was reading verse 1. But we are transformed by the renewing of the mind. And it's only the renewed mind that can fully understand what it means to be loved by God. So we can also in turn love other people. So the renewed mind, the foundation for that, two things, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Always those two things together. So today I want to talk about this, my handle. And we're going to have all of these amazing, amazing ministers sharing on what they're standing on. And I know that you also have a verse that you're holding on to for dear life. But I guess this sums it up. My handle is... The Word of God, nothing more and nothing less. Just a little trivia for you. During the time of Jesus, when they would bring the little kids to their school, so they would go to school, and it's called a synagogue. That's where they learn their alphabets. That's how they learn. They're where they learn the Word of God and everything. On the very first day, their rabbi, that's their teacher, so they would lay down all of these tablets and they would drizzle honey on them so that as they're reciting the word of God, they would taste the honey on their lips. And that's a picture of this, that the word of God is more to be desired than gold, much more than fine gold. That's in Psalms 19.10. And God's word is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. So that's how we must approach the word of God with so much awe, and we'd never take the Word of God casually. 
God's word is there because he has set his instructions for us to live according to his purposes for our lives. And so God's word is to be desired, it's to be pursued, and the evidence of our pursuit of God and his word is our obedience. Amen? And the word of God must be the supreme authority in our lives. Our faith, it comes by hearing the word. Our faith is built on uncontested evidences of the goodness of God, of the faithfulness of God as seen in his word. God shows us his will for our lives through his word. And we can never go beyond our understanding of our Christian walk. You can never go beyond your understanding of how it is to be a mom, for example, or a dad, or, or a child, or even a student. How am I going to be a successful businesswoman or businessman? How am I going to pray for other people? How am I going to intercede for my family? Everything that we know to do must be according to the Word of God. In simpler terms, God has given us His Word to reveal to us His heart, his purposes, and his plan for our lives. And let me tell you this, if ever that you're wondering, and I know it takes a process, it's never an overnight thing, that's why we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have, it's, it's dynamic. It's never just one-sided. We get to understand what it means to be a child of God. And when you're wondering, God, can I really hear your voice? How, how can I know that this is the right path for me to take when you're making decisions perhaps on career paths or perhaps you're thinking about going to Bible school next year? I don't know. We just started last week. And if you are wondering, God, I want to learn more. I want to get founded in your word more. Well, we have Biblical Foundations course. And we would love to see you there. Visit us in our booth as well. But going back to that, like, God, how can I? How can I know all of these things? How can I be led by the Spirit of God? It starts in His Word. Can I encourage you for you to read your Bibles every day? Because this is our daily bread. And another challenge perhaps is that you would actually get physical Bibles. I know, I know, I know we have it on our phones and everything. But it gets distracting, diba? <laughs> Nakakaandami, no? Mag, may nagpop lang na notification dyan. Ting, 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 ting. And the next thing you know, you're out of your devotional <laughs> already. So, ah. Uh, this is our nourishment. This is our sustenance. The Word of God and the Spirit of God does not contradict. And you grow in that capacity to hear His voice, to follow His leading, as you understand the Word of God, not just here, but the experiential knowledge of God, how you walk with Him daily and how He teaches you, this is the way. Again, we never take the Word of God casually in our lives. We approach it with fear, not fear na, I'm so scared of, pakatamaan ako ng kidlat kapag binuksan ko yung Bible. No. Why? Because again, you're already forgiven. You're already saved by the grace of God. So his instructions, his judgments here, his commandments here are profitable for your reproof, for your correction, for your pruning. Because God desires that you will become even more fruitful. As believers, that's his desire for all of us. And so going back to this, the word of God isn't just words on paper. It's not just a history lesson. It's our sustenance for our daily life. Psalms 119, 20 in the Amplified, it says, My soul is crushed. Grabe! My soul is crushed with longing for your ordinances at all times. I mean, this is the verse that I would love to be written on my epitaph one day. Please write that down. I'm like, oh God, I cannot get enough of it. And God's word is also precise. In Hebrews 4.12, it says this, For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word sword there is actually a scalpel of a surgeon. 
and it's able to penetrate as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of a person in both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intents of the heart. You have a God who knows you from the inside out and His goal is not just to modify your behavior, no, it's to transform your life from darkness to light. God's Word is transformational. There are two sides to the Word of God, the, edge, the edges, the sword of the Spirit. Number one, God's Word carries dynamic power and authority to bring His will to pass. God's Word, He spoke it to existence. God's, God's, God spoke the world into existence, and so we know that His Word carries power. He watches over His Word to perform it. When he releases a word over your life, a personal promise that you know is between you and the Lord, it will never return to him void. You can count on that because it is impossible for him to fail and it is not in his nature to lie. You can trust that he will bring it to pass in your life because he is faithful, he is willing, and he is powerfully able to do it. All you have to do is just rest and trust in Him. And number two, God's Word is the structuring reality of all things. The first one, that God's Word is His divine power and ability to bring His will to pass, is actually a Hebrew perspective. And then here, the second one, God's Word is the structuring reality of all things. That word there is logos. We find it all over the New Testament. It's the reason for our existence of everything. In other words, the reality of God's Word endures forever. It is the purpose for why in the Word of God all things consist. It is unbendable. It is unbreakable. So even when circumstances come and you think that these are the opinions of the world, wait long, Lord, why is this not aligning? The only way for you to test if it's a counterfeit is if you go to what's real and authentic, and that is the Word of God. Whenever lies come, whenever doubts arise, whenever circumstances, God, I know your Word says I'm already healed because you're my healer, but my circumstances say otherwise. You know what's real? You know what's your structuring reality? It's the Word of God, not your circumstances. Not the opinions of man, but the wisdom of God. And so, What's even more amazing about this? Remember that two thoughts. The Hebrew thought, God's word is the power of God to bring his will to pass and then the structuring reality of all things. Well, in John 1, 14, the word became what? Became flesh and dwelt among you. And his name is Jesus. He is full of grace and truth. So in Jesus, we find these two things. And you have a relationship with him. It's not just you simply following precepts. You're following a person. You have a living relationship with your Savior, with the word of God that became flesh. So I want you guys to grasp that. But as you live out the word, it's you experiencing the fullness of Jesus is. There are so many false teachings out there. There are so many distractions that can try to get you away from the will of God. The grace and truth that is in Jesus will keep you within his will and purposes for your life. Why? Because, and I love saying this, because our life is far too short not to live in the will of God. Your life is far too short not to love the word and love God. Your life is far too short not to obey him. And your life is far too short not to proclaim his word as well. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Katz. That's so powerful. Are you full? Do you have rooms for some more? Yeah. Amen. So, uh, sharing my handle as well, but I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm full of joy just uh, being uh, ministering with uh, Andre and Katz, just watching them grow in the Word of God. And, uh, you know, Andre, we used to go to their school and minister. He is, he, he right now, you know, he's preaching the Word of God, even for Katz, ministering together in the youth. 
it's just awesome to see them grow and pursue their calling. You know, it's, uh, come on, let's give the Lord a praise for His goodness. And it's all because of the Word of God. And I, I, I like how we started it because uh, uh, with what Andre is talking about, I'm going to continue on that. You know, because he mentioned about we're supposed to reflect Jesus to people, right? So I'm going to share my handle as well uh, when it comes to me uh, in my life. And I'm going to read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. It says here, uh, Colossians 3, 16 to 17, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, talking about the word, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Moving along in verse 18, it says here, Wives, submit to your husbands. Amen. Wow. It was a strong amen there. As it is fitting for the Lord. I'm not going to dwell there. But have you tried fitting a shoes or a dress that does not fit you? You don't have to answer that. Let's go to verse 19. <laughs> husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And all the husbands say, oh, wow. That's good. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And everybody say, Amen. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Wow, these words really changed my life. Especially, you know, when I started to have my children, raising them up as a kid, and then till a teenager. Wow. This is scripture will help you if you're a father. <laughs> Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, say this with me, whatever you do, or say, whatever I do, okay, work heartily as for the Lord, not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. This is scripture, uh, especially if you read the earlier part of the verse, it talks about how to relate, how we relate together as brothers and sisters. You know, this is one of the scriptures that has uh, one another. You know, if you read the scripture, especially in the Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, Colossians, Ephesians, Romans, and you see the word one another, that means that's the scripture that you need to uh, uh, get and then feed on in order for you to how to instruction on how you relate to each other all right so this is one of the instruction of the lord when it comes to us uh, as christians how we live as christians how we live in our new nature and then in verse 18 it says instruction also for a family setting like how we as a, how to a, has, a wife would uh, submit a husband would uh, care for his wife children and fathers and the Bible is, uh, has everything we need when it comes to life. Whether in business, here also about a bond servant, a, a worker. You know, that covers everything. You know, you know that every day uh, we relate to people, right? So this is an instruction also about relationship. And it's so good that we have a handle because one of the challenges in our life is how we relate. is in the area of relationship. If, it's, if there's one of the most painful things that can, uh, area of our life that, that can be painful is that in the area of relationship, right? Or, uh, and then you can see here that it, uh, it gives us instruction. But for me, it comes as an instruction, but also it comes as a correction. Because we have known this, we have known things, but yet we don't do it, right? So it will come as a correction. That's the power of the Word of God. You know, it is profitable. So even though it will come like a scary, like corre correction, who among you loves correction? Wow. I uh, <laughs> admire those people who love correction, but at times we don't like correction, right? But when it comes to the Word of God correcting us, it not, it's not to put us down, but it is profitable. Sabi natin, profitable. <laughs> yeah, help. Profitable. There. Trying to pronounce that correctly. 
But you know what I mean, right? So it's profitable. So profitable. All right. There you go. That's the Word of God in our life. We have to see the Word like that. So that it will not be something that we are scared of. Because it is for us. Now I'm talking about relationship. Here are some, one of the instructions. Some of the instructions regarding relationship. Now, this is my handle concerning this scripture. Found in verse 17. It says here, And whatever you do in word or deed. So whatever we, our actions or the words that we say. How we communicate. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. That means that you represent the Lord. You know, when an ambassador goes to another country, he goes in the name of the president or the country. He represents the president to the people where he's going to. So whenever, whatever you do, when you communicate, when you do things for others, or when we do things for others, we do it in the name of of the Lord. Because this, this will change your perspective when it comes to how you handle your work, how you handle your relationship. Because this means that when, whatever we do, we represent Jesus. And when you represent this, Jesus, of course, you will be careful of how you, your attitude, the way you deliver your words, the way you deliver your action, the way you do things, right? If you're representing someone that is highly respected, if you will not represent that person according to how they know him, you misrepresent that person. And that's why it's a very important attitude that we have that or mindset or motivation when it comes to us dealing with people. Whether that will be in work or in the church, in the ministry, in the community, wherever we, we have. Now, this is something that I handle too because there are a lot of times that my attitudes come out especially when I'm dealing with an, a person that is irritating or does not cooperate, you know, when we go to outreach or when we go to evacuation center. You know, it's not a comfortable place. People are irritated, and sometimes people can get impatient. And then if you lose sight or focus on why you are there or whom you represent, you can get even. <laughs> we have our own personality and character, right? Have you tried doing the personality test? What, uh, what did you find out about yourself? Is it dominant? Is it corrective? Or is it a slow carabao like me? <laughs> but the, we have different personalities. You have to admit that we were raised up in different backgrounds. We, we, we were raised up in different cultures and environment that affected our personality. But thank God. That whoever is in Christ, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, we can have a new perspective and mindset when it comes to dealing with people. We can be changed from the old person into a new person where we can be act according to the Word of God and represent and know whom we represent. Now, it deals with identity, right? Because when you represent Christ, you represent Him as a child of God. You represent him as a disciple. So you will be careful in the way, right? But of course, you're not motivated by fear that you might represent him. You are more living who you are to the people around you when it pertains to work, when it pertains to uh, uh, whatever you do in word or in deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord. Now, here's one interesting scripture in the last part. Giving thanks to God the Father, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's say through Him. We do it through Him, not in our own strength. That's one good news about this scripture because when the Lord asks us to do things, we don't, don't do it just uh, according to our strength, but we do it through Him with thanksgiving. You can only do things to other people in the name of the Lord with thanksgiving, if you do it through Jesus. Because of His grace, He enables us to do. Even though it's difficult and it's hard, we can do it because we have the grace to do whatever He has called us to do. Second thing about that, that, uh, that this is my handle when it comes to relating or whatever I do in word or in deed is that in uh, uh, verse 23, it says here that whatever you do, 
whatever you do. Sorry, I'm just go, going to the scripture, sorry. Verse 23, whatever you do, work heartily. You give your best. You put your heart to it. Work heartily as for the Lord, not for men. Knowing it is the Lord you are serving, that you will receive inheritance. But knowing whom you are doing it will change the way you do it. If I, you know that you're doing it, like example, if a president will visit here in, in a particular city, you know, the preparation is massive. The preparation is really detailed and then it's, it's, it's really everything will be cooperate because uh, they will prepare everything to make sure that the roads are clean. They will represent their city and may, because this uh, person is visiting because it, they respect him. But if a, a person, a barangay captain from a far, far away visit another place and they don't know him, the preparation is different, right? Because they don't know him. But for us, if we do it as and to the Lord, if we do it to the Lord, knowing who the Lord is in your life, what did the Lord do to you? Like uh, uh, Andre is uh, sharing a while back. You do it if you know that you're going to do it to the one who gave his life for you. To the one who forgave you. To the one who gave you second chances, third chances. To the one who loved you. It's going to be a different approach. It's going to be a different Right? You're going to give your best. And that's the motivation that we have. So no matter whom you're doing it, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a, and I don't know your position. We all represent a position, uh, uh, a role in society and family. Maybe you're a boss, maybe you're an employer, or you're an employee, you're a worker, you work uh, in the labor, and whatever you do. You're a driver, whatever you do. You do it heartily. As to the Lord. And you will see the change in the way you do things. And that's my handle when it comes to me. Whether I'm in the ministry. I'm not just uh, uh, conscious about representing Jesus. Even though if I'm in the community. I remind myself. I'm not expert on this. But this is something that I handle to and remind myself. Do I fail? Yes. There are times that I fail. That's why it, it comes as a correction. Because I know it already but I missed it. But I allow the Word of God to be a correction. It comes as a correction to me because I know there's profit. And there's one last thing I'm going to read to you. It says here, verse 24, Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. Imagine that. What a blessing. It's for your own profit when you apply the Word of God, when you do things, you know, uh, as unto the Lord, you do it, do it in the name of the Lord. But also you have a reward. Because it is not man that you are serving. Remember, whoever you're doing it, you're not doing it for that person. But if you have a mindset and motivation that you're doing it for the one who loves you, the one who created, the one who saved you, it's going to be a different story. Amen. There's profit, there's blessing, but there's also a reward. And I pray that you get that the next tomorrow morning, whatever you do, you go back to your work, you go back to your business. I pray that you have a handle concerning how you relate, how you do things. Because we are to represent Christ. We are to reflect Jesus to the people around us, whether that's a believer or unbeliever. And you will see the change. Amen. Come on, let's give Him praise for His Word today. Thank you, Andre and Katz, for those powerful words. If you take a moment to close your eyes a little bit, I want to give chance for those people who are here today and uh, haven't received Jesus Christ in their heart. You know, this is the first step for you to be able to really do what I'm saying. It would be difficult to apply this word if you don't know the person whom you're going to do it for. Like um, we mentioned, you do it for the Lord. But if you don't have a relationship with Him, if you don't have a knowledge of Him, uh, it's going to be difficult. And the first knowledge, the first knowing that you need to have concerning Christ is to receive Him as Lord and Savior. That's the very start. And then eventually as you grow, you will get to know Him even more as who He is. And if you're here today and haven't received Jesus Christ in your heart, the Bible says that uh, 
you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised him from dead, you will be saved. This is the first step for you to enter into the kingdom of God. But most importantly is to have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you are that person, you know, I encourage you to pray this prayer. This is the first step. It will lead you to a place where you recognize Him. You believe Him as your Lord and Savior. If you are that person, not going to ask you to raise your hands, but if you are that person, you follow this prayer to help you connect with Him, to, to help you have that relationship with Him. Say this prayer. Father God, I thank you for Jesus whom you sent because you love me. I receive Jesus in my life as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you sent him as my Savior. I believe that he died and on the third day he rose again for my forgiveness. I thank you for new life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give him praise. Thank you.